sunrise and sunset, promise and fulfillment, birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. We present a new series of radio programs, The Clock. I suppose that most of the words that poets and philosophers have written throughout the ages are notations on the human heart or speculations about the mysteries of life and death or another subject, time. For instance, the other night I was browsing through an old book of quotations by famous authors. One quotation I remember went something like this. Know the true value of time. Snatch, seize, and enjoy every moment of it. No idleness or procrastination. Never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. And as I read it, I wondered if Bill Phillips had read that, would he have gotten the point? Would he be doing what he is doing now? It's hard work and I don't seem to be getting any place. The serial number is 4E29815. Make of luck. Standard speed. Into mess. Racing spring. I've, I've opened a lot of them before. I've never had any trouble. That's my business opening thing. Folks. Ah, this lock's a tough proposition. Maybe it only seems tough because I'm excited and I'm getting a little shaky. Because I'm working against time. Here I am on the most important job of my life and I can't figure the combination that won't, won't open. Guy gets out of the whole thing. Never would have happened if it hadn't been for Geiger. Why did they ever take that job in the first place? Uh, dough. Sure, the extra dough. That's why I was in the bank that morning. It's um, a rather novel job, to say the least, Mr. Phillips. Well, how's that? Well, we'd like to engage you to unlock our safety deposit boxes when keys are lost or misplaced. Well, I don't get it, Mr. Geiger. <laughs> well, you see, Mr. Phillips... Bank policy prohibits our retaining a master key. Therefore, the owner of the box is given both keys. Well, they're very often lost. So you need a Jimmy Valentine. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it's not quite that romantic, Mr. Phillips. We simply require a reputable locksmith to open the deposit boxes under bank supervision, you see. And by the way, your company informed us that you're familiar with the Shilby lock. Oh, I helped build it. Oh, then you should be well qualified for the assignment. Of course, we'd expect you to be on call and available every day during banking hours. And? We're prepared to pay $300 per month for this service. Now, how does that strike you, Mr. Phillips? Well, I... I never knew a bank was willing to pay you for cracking their safes. <laughs> well, obviously we are. In a manner of speaking, of course. Well, it sounded like pennies from heaven. 300 bucks can buy a lot of cornflakes. I had two corns from the bank the first week. If it was easy to open those tin cans, you could spring the lock with a penknife in less than a minute. Geiger, being the head cashier, always stood by and supervised. He, he almost seemed to admire my work. Then one night, the latter part of the week, Geiger gave me another call. I went over to the bank. It was past six. The shades were drawn. I rapped on the door of his office and he let me in. Oh. Hello, Phillips. Come in, won't you? Yeah, thanks. Well, it's a little late for opening deposit boxes, isn't it? Uh, yes. That isn't what I called you about. Oh, but Phillips, uh, Phillips, I have been watching you. <laughs> I figured I might be taking some samples home. Oh, no, 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 I believe you're honest. And furthermore, it's virtually impossible for anyone to commit a theft. If the head cashier wished to prevent it. What do you mean, if he wished to prevent it? Phillips, how would you like to make a hundred thousand dollars? Hundreds, well, that's quite a jump from 300 a month. That's right. Let me show you something. Well, it looks like we're getting a new customer, huh? A very wealthy customer, Phillips. Universal Aircraft plans to bank their payroll money with us. So? There will be over $200,000 in our vault next week. Hmm, they must be paying good wages at Universal. The only person who has the combination to our vault is the manager. But I've got all the keys to the bank. 
Really? With your knowledge of locks, it would be a very simple matter. Uh, I uh, like my boyish tan. I understand you get quite a pallor in things. We could work it, Phillips, the two of us together. I've seen you open locks. You're smart, you're fast. Thanks. I have the information, you have the talent. Phillips, we wouldn't miss. Guys have been known to. When you're playing for high stakes, Phillips, you must take chances. It's too high for me. Half a set of points might Now, Now, listen. Forget it, Geiger. You're doing business at the wrong window. Now, just a minute, Phillips. I left him sitting there. I waited on the corner for a bus. Got him patient and decided to walk home. I reached the apartment about an hour later, started in the front door, and then I heard a woman's voice behind me. Oh, pardon me. Would you by any chance be Mr. Phillips? Yeah, right. Oh, I've been waiting for you. Well, I guess I shouldn't have wasted all that time walking. I'm Mrs. Geiger, Mr. Phillips. Oh, what can I do for you? Well, I'd like to talk to you. Right away, it's very important. All right. My car's in front. Can we drive? Why not? All right. Let's take the car. We got into her convertible. It was a nice-looking job, but she had better lines than the car. We drove down 8th Avenue, past the park. It was some time before she said anything. Mr. Phillips... Forgive me for coming to you like this, but it's about my husband. Mm -hmm. What about it? George has been taking money from the bank. Well, what do you know? It's gone on for more than a year now. Why are you telling me? Well, he, he plans to steal more. He told me he was going to ask you to help him. Yeah. Are you going to do it? No. Oh, I I'm glad. I don't think you are. Well, what do you mean? Well, it doesn't add up, that's all. Guy is your husband. If I go into the deal with him, he gets clean with the bank. He'll never be suspected. But well, that is, it's a hundred or one against him being suspected. Yes, but... Well, so, he'll be pretty safe. At least until he gets another bright idea. What's the matter, Mrs. Geiger? Uh, don't you like your husband? How oh, dare Relax, you? Relax, Mrs. Geiger. I don't know what, what all this is about, but there's one thing I do know. I don't want any part of it. Now, you can stop this trolley. I transfer here. Got out of the car and walked away. Somehow I could smell fish frying, and it wasn't Friday. And she was up to something, I was sure of that. I, I tried to figure out what, what she wanted from me. Couldn't get a total. All I had to do was open that safe for Geiger, and both their worries were over. So why did she take all the trouble to warn me off? Maybe she was tired of her husband. Well, then why didn't she just turn him in and let it go at that? Yeah, why didn't she... All of a sudden, I got a notion. Yeah. Made a lot of sense. Around 10 next morning, I was sure Geiger was at the bank. I called her at home. Would she join me for lunch at the Barbizon? She'd be delighted. I was waiting at a corner table when she walked in. I hope I'm not late. Uh, no, no, no. I, I just got here myself. Sit down. Thank you. You were asking me some questions last night, Mrs. Geiger. Now, I'd uh, like to ask you one. Why, of course. Mrs. Geiger, uh, when did you... When did you, uh first decide you wanted to kill your husband. What? Surprised. <laughs> well, I gave the matter a lot of thought last night. That's how come I'm so smart this afternoon. You must be out of your mind. Oh, sure, sure. You don't really believe that I plan to kill my husband. Not you. Me. What's the most preposterous statement you've made yet? Why would you want to do a thing like that? I wouldn't. Unless you could get me to fall for you. What could be more ideal? Geiger's sitting on top of 200 G's locked in a vault. Only you don't love Geiger anymore. You just love what's in that vault. Listen, Mr. Phillips. So you find a nice, personable young man with a knowledge of locks who can help Geiger open the vault. Are you quite finished? No, not quite. You see, you suggest to this young man that after he removes the money from the vault, it might not be a bad idea to close the door on Geiger. He'll be found dead. The police will... 
check the shortage, blame Geiger, and boy and girl make off with 200000 very clever. Isn't it, though? Then, according to your plan, all I have to do now is to get you to fall in love with me. That'd be kind of hard to do. Would it? Why? Well, I don't even know your first name. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh? Hello, Kitty. Somehow, after our first luncheon date, I saw quite a bit of Kitty Geiger. She wasn't hard to take, not at all. Then one afternoon, a couple of weeks later, Kitty suggested we take a drive down to the beach. I drove and she sat quietly beside me. I watched the wind playing tag with her hair. I smelled a perfume. We drove most of the afternoon. It was turning dark when we started back to town. Why are we stopping? I thought we might go down on the beach. Yeah, it's getting late. You do, huh? Mm-hmm. Kitty. Yes? How did you happen to marry Gaia? Oh, I don't know. I... I thought I loved him. Did you? No. No, I didn't. But you wanted to. And you figured he could give them to you. Maybe. Kitty, uh... Kitty, how do, how do you feel about me? Well, I... I like you. I like you very much. Anything more? Maybe. Is, uh... Is that the truth? Yes. Okay, before you go home, you can drop me at the apartment. I'm going to call Geiger. Pretty no. I'm going to do it for you, Kitty. But if you ever double-cross me, I'll kill you. I think, my friends, that I feel another quotation coming out. But that's what you get for writing so many different things about me. But it tickles my vanity. Well, quote, Time that strengthens friendship weakens love. Unquote. The author of that was a Frenchman. I'm afraid he was a rather cynical gentleman when it came to man and maid, but applied to the case of Bill Phillips and Kitty Geiger, it might be appropriate. Is everything set? Yeah, tomorrow night. What time? 8.30. Do you think he suspects anything? Not a chance. He's too concerned about getting his hands on that dough. How do we work it? He'll hand the money to me from the vault. I'll pack it in a suitcase just outside the door. Then as soon as he gets to the last pack of bills... He'll shut the vault. Right. He'll be in the car on 54th Street. I'll meet you at the alleyway. Bill? Bill, uh, after you do it, how long will he live? An hour. Two at the most. And when the police find him in the morning? The CPA will take an inventory, uncover the shortage, and then put two and two together. Which adds up to what? He was in a deal, somehow got stuck in the vault, and his accomplice skipped with the dough. But where are the accomplices? Well, that's been all taken care of, baby. I got the name and address of a guy who's just finished a ten-year stretch for grand larceny. He's out on parole. We're not taking anyone else in No, no, of course not. I'm just going to see to it that 300 bucks in new bills get planted in this guy's room. He's a cinch to be picked up. Uh, sounds good. So far. It's perfect. Now, listen to me. Here's what we do. Tomorrow night, I go into the bank with Geiger. He's got a key to the front door. We'll get started about 11. By 11.30, we should be finished. If everything goes the way we plan. How's it coming? Be quiet. I'll have it in a second. Work. There's your 200 G's, Mr. Geiger. The money was stacked in neat little packages on the floor of the vault. Geiger took one look and his eyes lit up like a drive-in stand. I sent him in to get it. Three or four minutes, we had the suitcase almost filled. I looked into the vault. How many more? That's about it. Just these bills here and we'll be ready to... Phillips? Phillips, what are you doing? Phillips, aren't we going to take the rest of the money? No. So long, Geiger. I went to the side door, unlocked it with Geiger's key, started to step out into the street and tripped over something. Well, then it happened. Somehow I'd set off the burglar alarm. There wasn't much time to lose. I told Kitty to drive over to a rooming house on 2nd Avenue. 
The guy who was to plant the dough for me was waiting on the corner. I gave him two envelopes, one with the 300 new bills. The other contained 300 unmarked bills. This second envelope was for the gentleman's trouble. Even frame-ups are expensive these days. Then Kitty and I circled back over to Broadway and 45th Street. I took the suitcase into a bus depot and checked it in a pay locker. I gave Kitty the key. We were both a little jumpy by then, so I suggested we go someplace for a drink. We had two, three, four, who knows? Uh, uh, how do you feel, baby? Oh, I feel wonderful. Wait a minute, Kitty. What's wrong? Listen. I'll leave this for the bill. Come on. Extra paper. Get your new extra paper. Boy. All about the big... Boy, let me have one of those, huh? Here. Thanks. Read all about the bank robbery. Extra paper. What is it? That burglar alarm. They got to the safe in time. Geiger's alive. Geiger was alive. He'd been arrested, but they... That didn't help. As soon as things got tough, he'd sing songs about Kitty and me all over headquarters, maybe before. I told Kitty there was only one thing to do. We'd have to get out of town and quick. We made arrangements for me to get plane tickets to Mexico first thing in the morning. I got to the airport around seven, picked up the tickets, and then took a cab to Kitty's house. I thought it might be a good idea if I weren't seen going in, so I went around to the back gate. Walked up the steps to the porch. I was just about to ring the doorbell when I heard voices coming from the living room. I slipped around to the window, pressed myself against the wall, and took a quick look inside. Kitty was talking with a man who carried a revolver. The man was George Geiger. I don't believe that it's your girl, George. How else would I be here? But when they found you in the vault... I had to think of some sort of alibi. I said I was passing by the bank, found the door open, went in to investigate. Someone struck me from behind, I woke up in the boat. That's fantastic. Oh, I agree with you, Kitty. But apparently the police thought differently when they arrested an ex-thief with $300 of the stolen money in his possession. Tell me, Kitty, who's this... this silent partner of ours? It it was a frame-up. Bill did it. It appears that Bill did quite a number of things. Among them, shutting the vault on me. George, I didn't know he would. I, I didn't know anything about it, believe Kitty, me. Kitty, I haven't the faintest desire to believe or disbelieve you. I'm only interested in one thing. Where's the money? Bill has it. Where? George, I'll make a bargain with you. I'll tell you where it is if, if you'll forget what's happened. George, we can start again with that money. We can be happy again. We could be, Kitty. I, I can make up the shortage at the bank. We'll be even with the world. Tell me where it is, Kitty. It's in Bill's apartment. I'll get it. Wait for me. I won't be long. I'll wait, George. Uh, Hello? Hello, Western Airlines. When's the first plane to South America? Uh, Brazil? Can I pick up the ticket at the airport? Right, I'll, I'll be there right away. Thank you. Hello, Kitty. Yeah. I, uh, I got the ticket. Well, why, why, that's fine. When do we leave? Oh, not until this evening. Oh, well, that'll give me a chance to pack. Mm-hmm. Do you want to stop back for me later this afternoon? Sure, why not? Hey, you look worried, Kitty. Anything bothering you? No, not, not a thing. Oh. Well, I'll pick you up later then, huh? I'll be with you. I went out the front door. I wasn't worried whether anyone saw me or not. I stood under an elm tree on the neighbor's lawn. <laughs> Didn't have to wait long. Kitty came out in a few minutes. She was carrying an overnight bag. You going someplace, Kitty? Bill. Well, you're early, baby. We're not supposed to leave until tonight. Well, you see, Bill, I... Well, there are some things I have to do. Sure, sure, sure. I understand. But first, you and I... We're going to do a little sight. Bill? Bill, we've been driving for hours. Where are we going? Oh, we're just taking a look at the ocean. I thought you liked the ocean, Kitty. Remember the first time we took this trip? Well, let's go back, please. Remember where we stopped? Yeah, I think it was right about here. I lit a cigarette. Hey, you have a match, Kitty? Here's a lighter. Thanks. 
Well, then I agreed to steal the money and lock Geiger in the vault. That must be a terrible way to die. Billy. I remember what I said, Kitty. If you ever double-crossed me, I'd kill you. Take me out, Bill. Take me out, please. Too chilly for you. All right, we'll go back. We drove slowly back into town. Kitty didn't say a word. I knew exactly what I was going to do. I drove up 54th, swung the car into an alleyway. Bill? This is the bank. That's right, Kitty. Let's get out. No. Come on. But it, it's closed. Of course. You never break into a bank in broad daylight. We're not going in. Sure we are. Just as soon as I pick this back door lock... Ah, uh, these, these door locks are easy. This should only take a few seconds. But what are you going to do? We're going to get you some money, Kitty. More money than you ever saw in your life. But there isn't any there anymore. You know that. Ah. Oh, there's still a little left. There must be. What are those stocks and bonds with all those pretty colors? They're negotiable. You enjoy looking them over, Kitty. Come on. Bill. Bill will be caught. No, no. They'd never suspect lightning to strike twice. Anyway, we're too smart for them, Kitty. You take me, for instance. I'm a real clever guy. That's why you went for me, isn't that right? Now, I want you to watch this, baby. I'll show you just how clever I am. No, 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 please. And there's one tumbler. <laughs> Easy now. There's the releasing spring. Bill. Hey, take a look, Kitty. Take a good look. That's the stuff people lie and cheat and steal for, even kill for. And it's all yours. I'm giving it to you. Every dollar. Well, don't stand back there, Kitty. Come closer. You can see it better. Come on, come on, come closer. Makes you, makes you feel just like a kid in a candy shop, doesn't it? Look at it, Kitty. Look at it for the rest of your life. You look at it for the rest of your life! Hey, Kitty! <laughs> I guess that's what happened to me. If I hadn't got that wild idea, I wouldn't be trying to open this vault now. I, I forgot to give Kitty a lighter back. Yeah. It has a name on it. And I've been using it to work with. The fluid's almost gone now. And this, this job's beginning to look hopeless. I need more time. I know I'll write a note. I'll write a note telling the whole story and wrap it around the lighter. The police shouldn't have any trouble piecing the case together. Ah, the lighter's gone out. I'm going to have to give up. It seems funny. With all my knowledge of locks, I can't open a simple affair like this. Of course... I've never tried to open a vault from the inside before. Yes, Bill Phillips learned the value of time. Learned it in those last few failing minutes. Learned it in darkness and with despair. Not a very happy story, to be sure. But then in my position, you run into all kinds. Happy ones and sad ones, just like the quotations I told you about. Terrible ones and fateful ones. I see many who use their hours wisely, and others I see, too, who waste time. And often, much too often, I dare say, time wastes them. The clock will be heard again next week, same time, same station. Written by Lawrence Clee and starring Hart McGuire. You heard Ken Wayne as Bill Phillips. Others in the cast were Dinah Shearing and Ken Hannum. The Clock, directed by John Saul, is a Grace Gibson radio production. Oh.